The Hagia Sophia is Istanbul's landmark. It symbolizes the Byzantine, the Ottoman, as well as the Turkish period. The architecture is so marvelous that the old Byzantines believed that the dome was held by God himself. Yanis Kortesholo knows everything about the Hagia Sophia. For 20 years, he's been guiding tourists to the World Heritage Site, and when he talks about it, he is still amazed every time. But right now, everything is different. First, the museum closed due to the coronavirus, and then the museum was suddenly no longer a museum. Because President Recep Tayyip Erdogan turned the Hagia Sophia back into a mosque. As a Christian citizen of this country, it saddens me. But I'm trying to stay calm. As a mosque, the Hagia Sophia will still be open for visitors. They can even enter free of charge in the future. But the rules will probably change. Visitors will now only be permitted outside prayer times. Mosaics and icons that testify that the Hagia Sophia was the most important church of Christianity for centuries will be covered with curtains during worship. The best and biggest decision ever made for Turkey. It's great news for the entire Muslim world. We've been longing for this for more than 80 years. I am happy we can see these days. Thanks to our president for this decision. Many people here are happy that the Hagia Sophia is now a mosque again. But there is also a lot of criticism. The European Union has called the decision regrettable, the US a disappointment. Pope Francis said he was very distressed and UNESCO wants to review the Hagia Sophia's status as a World Heritage Site. Criticism does not only come from abroad. Some people in Istanbul consider the Hagia Sophia decision to be a political maneuver by Erdogan. We already have enough mosques in Istanbul. We don't need another one. I think this has clearly been a political decision. They just do that to distract people from the actual problems in this country, the economic crisis and high inflation. The Hagia Sophia is a museum. I am absolutely against making it a mosque, because Istanbul is home to many religious beliefs. Tourist guide Yanis Kortesholo, for example, belongs to the Greek Orthodox minority in Turkey. People in his church see themselves as descendants of the Byzantines who built the Hagia Sophia in the 6th century. For them, it's part of their identity. But Yanis is reluctant to voice criticism. He says his community has experienced many setbacks, and yet they've always managed to move on. Nationalists, of course, now celebrate the Hagia Sophia decision as a victory. And because we're a very small community, they don't hear us. In a country with more than 80 million people, it's not easy to make a few thousand voices heard. Nearly four million people visited the Hagia Sophia last year. And Yanis Kortesholo hopes that he can continue to show this monument to as many tourists as possible. Because for him, regardless of its status, it remains the most beautiful landmark of Istanbul. And our correspondent Yuli Han, who you heard there, also spoke with the prominent Nobel Prize winning novelist Orhan Pamuk. He's been critical of the decision to turn the Hagia Sophia back into a mosque. Orhan Pamuk, the great Hagia Sophia here in Istanbul, a museum for the past 86 years, part of UNESCO's World Heritage, is now a mosque again and will echo with Muslim prayers. How does that make you feel? What's been going through your mind in recent days? In 1934, the founder of Turkish Republic, the great Kemal Atatürk, converted the Saint Sophia or Hagia Sophia Jami to a museum. Why did he do that? He wanted to say to the modern, especially Western world, that 
this is a great, used to be a great a Greek Orthodox architecture, biggest Greek cathedral at all. Now I want to make it a convert into a museum saying to the rest of the world that we Turks are secular. We want to impose French laicite to our state and be part of the big European culture and civilization. That was the decision he made. Now they are undoing that. The Hagia Sophia is hugely important for Muslims and Christians alike. As a museum, as you mentioned, it was a secular space. So what does the decision, the Turkish president's decision to turn it back into a mosque mean for Turkey? It simply means that we don't respect Kemal Atatürk's secularism anymore. We want to be popular. We want to be populist. We want to play around with popular Islam and say to the rest of the world that we are now not very happy with the West. This is not a message that I like. I am critical of it. But I'm surprised by the fact that opposition here is not challenging it. Why? Because they are acting and thinking that this is a very popular decision. Unfortunately, it is a popular decision embraced by Turkish people and the fate of Saint Sophia is, should be given by Turkish people. But I am also a Turkish citizen and I am like many millions of people who are seculars and against this. But unfortunately, our voices are not heard. So why are people who are unhappy with this decision not speaking up? One reason they are not raising their voices because there is no free speech in Turkey to challenge this. They are also, unfortunately, afraid of saying this is Kemal Atatürk's our secular tradition, please let's not change it. This is important in the sense that Turkish nation is distinct from this, uh, different, distinct from other Muslim nations by the fact that we are secular and the rest of the world knows this. Every single Turk, even if they are, if, even if they are voting for AKP, the ruling party, Islamist party, are secretly or openly proud to be different than other Muslim nations saying that, like Europeans, we are secular and this is the originality of Turkey. Now they are taking away that pride of being both Muslim and secular simultaneously. That was Kemal Atatürk's project.